Joining us now is an expert designer of movie posters, business logos, cartoons, and more. David Zinn joins us now on the Michigan Megacast. David, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate having you on. So first off, uh, I'd like to ask this of any artist that joins us. What inspired you to pursue art as a professional career? Um, well, my mother hates when I say this, but it's really because I successfully failed at any other kind of career. I was a compulsive doodler as a child, had no idea that was even a job option, uh, and actually studied other things in college. But when I got out of college, the main thing people wanted from me was, hey, could you draw this for me? Because they knew I was the guy who draws stuff. <laughs> and so your art has a range of different commissions. You've been commissioned on theatrical posters, uh, educational cartoons, landfill murals, uh, environmental superheroes, corporate allegories, hand-painted dump trucks. It, it goes all along a wide range. Where did that range come from? Because to draw, because drawing is its own medium, but then when you go to these different out, uh, outlets, for those drawings, I would imagine it takes on a whole different meaning and it's a whole different process for one versus the other. Uh, well, I, I mostly just made myself available in a relatively small town of Ann Arbor to do whatever people needed done. Uh, but actually all of that has now been blown out of the water by the one type of art I started doing exclusively for myself for non-commercial purposes, uh, which is drawing on the street with chalk, uh, which is what I'm going to be doing at the Ann Arbor Art Fair uh, in July, uh, that it actually serves very little purpose, which is what I like about it. It's, it's an ephemeral art that exists only out on the street until it rains. So your street art drawings, you, you mentioned that you're going to be doing some uh, street art uh, drawings in chalk during the Ann Arbor Art Fair. They're considered to be anamorphic uh, parietal. Uh, can you tell our viewers what those terms mean? Of course, of course. They are weird words to use. Uh, I think I like using them in part because they sound like fake words, but they are real. Um, para, uh, well, anamorphosis is a trick that artists have been using for hundreds of years. It's, it's the technique of stretching or distorting a flat image so that when you look at it from one perfect point of view, it looks three-dimensional. It's a very common trick for street artists to use. Um, I think because when you draw something on the ground at people's feet, they can't actually look at it from straight above because they'd have to be 20 feet tall to do that. And so since people can only look at it from a weird angle, you might as well make one of those weird angles the ideal place to stand and then people know, oh, this is, this is where I should see this from. Um, the pareidolia is something that I think I've made my own particular, you know, street art indulgence. Uh, it's something we all do. It's, a, it's an inherent psychological tendency we all have to see patterns in random stuff. It's why we see clouds and say, hey, that looks like a cow or that looks like a bunny. It's why you see faces in wallpaper or get frightened by that pile of clothes on a chair at two o'clock in the morning. It's because your brain is always looking for possible meaning in everything it sees. And one of the things I like most about drawing out on the sidewalk is that it's covered with all kinds of shapes and random pieces and bits, uh, specks and streaks and cracks. And, and it takes very little application of this pareidolia to see things that might want to be drawn in any surface you look at. And that's what I do. So what are some of the more unique street art designs that you've made in, in your time practicing this pareidolia? Because there's, like you said, there's so many different phenomenons that you, that, and, and patterns that can be experienced by people in everyday things. And especially when you think about Michigan surfaces and the ways mm. that they crack and the ways that mm -hmm. they bend, I'd imagine there's quite a lot of variety, even in a place, like you said, in the small town of Ann Arbor. Oh yeah, there is an incredible amount of variety. In fact, uh, especially starting at the beginning of the pandemic, when I did all of my work for two years within walking distance of my own house, uh, not only did I not run out of new places to draw, I didn't run out of things I wanted to draw on the same place. There are now places in downtown Ann Arbor, specific one square of sidewalk that I've drawn five or six different things on the same place. So th you're right, especially with Michigan conveniently breaking up <laughs> the sidewalk here and there, there's always going to be something new to inspire a new piece of art. Do you see something on, on the street, like a manhole cover or 
uh, some sort of signage that that's got a, a certain shadow at a certain time mm-hmm. of the day or something along those lines that then sparks an idea or is it more of a trial and error where I'm going to try this at this location see if it works and if it doesn't I'll go back to the drawing board no pun intended and think of something else <laughs> it's a very good question and a very good reference to the drawing board because the beauty of it is that there is no drawing board which means you don't really have that opportunity uh, you only really have until the sun goes down or a rainstorm comes to complete any given drawing. So even if there's very rarely a plan, and I think this is the key, is to very rarely have a plan, something will emerge. I mean, you could walk away at any time. But even though I could walk away at any time, and even if the drawing isn't going the way I expected, usually something comes of it, because why not make something while you're there? We're joined by David Zinn, professional artist with Zinn Art, joining us on the Michigan Megacast, uh, and you'll be able to see some of his art on the streets of Ann Arbor during the Ann Arbor Art Fair, where he'll be uh, doing many of these drawings that we have been speaking about, these street drawings in chalk throughout Ann Arbor during that time in this July, that the Ann Arbor Art Fair, July 21st through 23rd in uh, downtown Ann Arbor, 30 blocks of the city will be featuring this art fair. And so, David, you have a couple of, of uh, characters you, you go back to, Sluggo and, and Philomena, who are uh, appearing in a lot of your street art also. Can you tell us about these characters, uh, who, who they are, and where the ideas for these characters <laughs> came from? Uh, Sluggo's probably been around the longest. He was one of the first things I drew, actually, on a driveway right next to my house. And he was actually my first failed drawing because he was supposed to be a drawing of a human child that went really, really badly to the point where he ended up green with eyes on stalks above his head. Um, And because his eyes are this weird bug eye kind of, you know, independent existence floating above his head, he's very excited about everything. I think he's been a good companion for that reason, because any way you draw him, he has strong emotions about whatever's happening. Uh, So he's the exuberant side of things. Uh, Philomena, by comparison, was drawn originally at the request of a small child in my neighborhood. And it didn't even occur to me at the time that drawing a pig with wings has a lot of symbolic power um, and symbolic positive power and encouraging power only because the phrase that'll happen when pigs fly is such an inherently mean spirited thing to say, because that is used solely to discourage people. That means that for some people, and I've heard people comment this as they're walking by on the street, seeing a flying pig just has an inherently encouraging feel to it like no 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 whatever you want to have happen yeah it could probably happen because look pigs can fly um she in contrast has very small eyes and a on a face which i tried to make look scared or frightened or even exuberantly happy and i can't do it uh something about that character is always very much calm and accepting and just okay with whatever's happening. And I find that the two together make a nice balance of influences in my life. We're joined by David Zinn, professional artist, joining us on the Michigan Megacast. You'll find him in Ann Arbor with his street drawings all throughout Ann Arbor during the Ann Arbor Art Fair this July. More information can be found by searching Ann Arbor Art Fair that happens July 21st through 23rd in Ann Arbor. You can learn more about David's art by visiting zinnart.com, Z-I-N-N-A-R-T.com, zinnart.com for more information and to see some of his pieces of street art and more on his website, zinnart.com, again, is the website. And you also have a collection of artworks uh, in, in a book called Chance Encounters. Can you tell us about Chance Encounters? I do. Uh, what people yeah. can find in that? Yeah, Chance Encounters just came out this spring. It's being published by Prestel in Germany. Uh, so it's actually got a pretty good reach, uh, unlike some of my first books, which were published very locally and, and have so few copies that people are scrambling to find any that are left. Um, this is basically what makes the ephemerality okay, because I can't save any of these original drawings. They're stuck to the ground. I can't take them home, which is actually one of the best things about it, because I never have to worry if I have room in my house to store more art, which is a problem a lot of artists have. Uh, But to make it okay, I take photographs and I can publish the photographs and people can enjoy those anytime and anywhere and also preserve the stories that emerge around them because each one of these feels like it's an illustration from a story that hasn't been written. And so each one comes with a one sentence reference, just an allusion to what might be happening. Usually they have a name and something is happening to them, but it's up to the reader to supply everything else. 
We're joined by David Zinn, professional artist, joining us on the Michigan Megacast. Again, his website, zinnart.com, Z-I-N-N-A-R-T.com. We can also learn more about where you can get a copy of Chance Encounters and see some of his previous art. You'll be able to see his latest editions of street art at the Ann Arbor Art Fair coming up this July. And so where uh, among in the city are you going to be planning it or do you plan at this time if you have those plans to mm. make some of these street art, art pieces? Is it going to be in a relatively uh, close area or is it going to yeah. be all throughout the art fair? Well, it is true that any nice day in Ann Arbor, I am likely to be somewhere drawing something, <laughs> um, generally in the Main Street, Liberty Street area, because that's where I usually run errands and things. And that's my favorite way to make art is when I'm just walking through town. However, for the art fair, uh, they give me the opportunity to draw in front of the post office down on Liberty, a very downtown location, very central to my thinking of what is downtown Ann Arbor, because it's right near the intersection of Fifth Avenue and Liberty. Um, and it's a space where I normally can't draw because it's federal property. It's one of the only places that a security guard has ever given me a stern look and told me to keep walking. So I relish art fair just for the, the indulgence of being able to draw in a forbidden place. So I'll be there uh, definitely on Thursday and Saturday and possibly on Friday as well because we like to be prepared for possible erasure of the ground by rain in the meantime. Hopefully nothing that's going to get in anybody's way. Um, so I'll be right down there, also right near one of my only permanent pieces in town, which is a mural on Fifth Avenue right next to the post office uh, that people are welcome to come see. It's actually a very good photo op for anyone who wants to participate in a piece of art. So I hope people will consider that as well. David, if people can't come to the art fair, they can't see your art on the streets uh, either during the art fair proper or afterwards because Mother Nature decides that the show <laughs> is over, uh, how can they find you on social media? Uh, I'm on pretty much everything, I believe. Uh, I have a professional Facebook page called uh, David Zinn Illustration uh, that barely distinguishes it from my actual Facebook page, but add the illustration on there and you'll be fine. I'm on Twitter at David Zinn underscore art. Uh, and on Instagram, I think is just my name, David Zinn. And recently on TikTok, I've started posting actual videos of works in progress. Uh, that have been very popular, and that is an account called Street Art by David Zinn. And all this information can be found on zinnart.com, Z-I-N-N-A-R-T.com for more information about his pieces, to, uh, to get a, count, a copy of Chance Encounters, and just in case you were unable to memorize all of that social media, you can <laughs> have links to all that as well. David, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It was nice talking to you.